Step two, plane waves. This is our first example in 3D. So um, instead of having just uh, an X for our spatial coordinate, we're going to have three coordinates, X, Y, and Z. And there'll be a lot of vector notation. So let's fix um, what, we cons uh, what we are going to uh, write down mathematically. So the unit vector along the X direction is given by I hat, along the Y direction is given by J hat, and along the Z direction is given by K hat. Now these hats mean that they are vectors and that they have unit length. And here we can see our example of a plane wave traveling along some direction given by a vector k. Before k was just a number, we called it the wave number, whereas now k is a vector. It's related, as later we will show, to the wavelength of the traveling wave in three dimensions, and also it has a direction because it gives us in exactly in which direction the wave propagates. And don't get confused between this k, which is the propagation vector, and this k, this k which is just the uh, unit vector along the z direction. So whenever there's a hat, this is a unit vector uh, along the z direction, and whenever there's an arrow, it's the uh, uh, wave vector. And a plane wave is given by the following fact. If you take your wave, and you consider a plane that's perpendicular to uh, the direction of the propagation of the wave, then the disturbance of your wave is constant along the entire plane. So here, this slice given by this uh, uh, dashed line, if we actually compute the psi for uh, the wave function for our traveling wave, then the value of the wave function is the same. But it's not just the same along this one line, it really extends across the entire plane. So it extends in this direction here, in this xy direction, but also in the z direction, it goes up. So to give you a little bit of a better, better idea how that works is uh, the following picture. See, if you stack a lot of these uh, images that uh, I have shown here, this is really what we mean by a plane wave. You've got a bunch of these guys next to each other, but also on top of each other, such that if you draw a plane across all of them, perpendicular to the direction of the travel, psi is constant across that plane. So this is a plane wave. An example of what is not a plane wave would be a wave like this, where we, we have shifted one set of these wave fronts, and you can see that if you draw a um, plane, across all of them, you're not going to get the same uh, disturbance. You're not going to get the same value of the psi for all of them. So this is not a plane wave. Now let's get a little bit mathematical and before we describe a plane wave mathematically, we should consider how do we even describe a plane in three dimensions. So here's our coordinate system given by our Cartesian coordinates x, y, and z, and we would like to have some compact uh, expression, mathematical expression, that describes this gray plane that's perpendicular to some vector k. So we've got our plane perpendicular to the um, uh, wave vector k, and we consider a fixed point on the plane given by the vector r0. So it can be any point, but it has to lie on the plane. And that's this point here with its corresponding vector r0. And in Cartesian coordinates, it can be like that. It's got components x0, y0, and z0. Then we take any point, arbitrary point r, given by vector r. And this does not have to lie in the plane. So it's got some arbitrary coordinates x, y, and z. And we form the difference between these two vectors. So r vector r minus vector r0 is given by this expression here. This is quite straightforward. Now the trick comes in. What we do is we require that the inner product between the vector k, which is perpendicular to the plane, and this following uh, vector, which is formed by the difference between r and r0, is zero. What does it mean that uh, when the inner product is zero? It means the two vectors are perpendicular. In other words, our vector r minus r0 by this requirement is perpendicular to the vector k. And what does that mean? It means then that the uh, point, this, we, we basically make this point 
lie in the plane that is perpendicular to k. We can rearrange our expression as follows. We, we have vector k times vector r is equal to vector k dot, sorry, not times, but dot, the inner product, dot r0. But we said that k is fixed, right? It describes our traveling wave. It's, it's not changing, our, at least in this simple example. And r0 is also fixed. We just picked a point on the plane, and we're not changing this point. The only thing that can change here is the r. So we have the following description of a plane uh, in uh, mathematic in vector notation. We've got that for any point on the plane, and this point is given by r, this must be satisfied. The inner product of k and r must be some constant. And this constant is simply given by the inner product between an arbitrary point that we know lies on the plane and vector k. So it's kx times x0 plus ky times y0 plus kz times z0. So this is our mathematical description of a plane. Now let's consider uh, an example of a plane wave. Again, we're going to keep uh, uh, using psi as uh, our uh, notation for uh, the wave function. But now in terms of an x, we need to consider x, y, and z given by the vector r. And this is a very simple sinusoidal plane wave. It's got some amplitude given by a, and the spatial variation is given by the following, sine of the inner product between k and r. So what it looks like in exponential form is the following. And we can think of it as follows. We've got our direction of propagation given by k, so that's along this direction. And then we are considering sets of planes. And these colors represent that any point on that plane, for example, this white plane, has the same value of psi. So if you actually plot just the value of psi as you propagate through space along k, then you see it here. It starts, let's say, at 0. Then you shift a little bit in the direction of k. You reach this other point, this uh, uh, light blue point given by a different plane. And here, the value of psi r is different. And this pattern repeats uh, in space. If we could extend it, then here there would be another set of uh, uh, blue planes, and then another set of orange uh, planes, and so on and so forth. So now we're getting to a point where we can actually ask and answer the question, what is the wavelength of such an equation? If we see an expression like this, how do we derive the wavelength? Well, first we need to consider a unit vector along the direction of the propagation of the wave, given simply by the following. All we do is we take the uh, wave vector k and we divide it by its magnitude, given by the following expression. And then we require the, that the wave function repeats itself after uh, some distance uh, given by lambda if we displace the wave along the direction of k. Mathematically, we can write it down like this. Psi r is equal to psi r plus this displacement uh, given by uh, lambda multiplied by the unit unit vector along the propagation, along the direction of the propagation of the wave. So if we substitute it back into our sinusoidal plane wave, we get the following expression, and we can then expand the inner product on this side over here. And what we get is the following. We get something on the uh, right-hand side that looks similar, that's on the left-hand side, plus this extra lambda times in a product of k with itself, divided by the magnitude of k. But we know from basic vector calculus that um, the inner product of a vector with itself is just the magnitude of the vector squared. So we can substitute it back in, and what we get is the following expression. And now in order for this to be true, we require that this factor, this exponential on the right-hand side, e to the i, uh, i lambda k, must be equal to 1. And when is that true? Well, it's true when um, lambda k is equal to 2 pi, which immediately gives us a relationship between the magnitude of the uh, wave vector and the wavelength. So we see that we really recover, even though we are in three dimensions, we recover the same uh, expression um, for the wavelength as uh, in one dimension.
The next question is, um, how fast uh, does the wave travel? But before we answer that, we have to know how do we include time uh, dependence into our uh, wave description, and that's very similar. If we want a sinusoidal traveling plane wave, we do the same thing as we do in one dimension. All we have to do is include um, mm, the time dependence as follows. So in the exponential form, we just add minus or plus omega t. If we have minus omega t, then our wave is traveling along the k direction. If we have plus omega t, then uh, our wave is traveling along the minus k direction, which means it's traveling in the opposite direction. And all of, the, all of these planes that are traveling in time, uh, which, are constant, which have constant psi or constant disturbance, are called wave fronts. Now we are in a position to derive um, the velocity of the wave. So again, let's consider a plane given by the, the plane wave given by this blue, uh, blue plane here. And it's traveling in some direction given by um, wave, wave vector k. And we consider a point on the wave given by the vector r. And what we can do is we can just do a projection of this vector r onto uh, vector k, which gives us a, a small vector rk um, that's in the direction of the wave propagation. And we say that this projection, this psi, uh, as we said from the um, uh, from the properties of plane waves, these two psi's they have to be the same. So psi of uh, rt has to be the same of psi rkt. And if we wait some small time uh, dt, what the plane wave does, it propagates by some distance drt, drk. Yep. And this uh, propagation is along the, along the direction given by the vector k. So now what we do is we have the following relationship that at time t, uh, um, our psi uh, of rk at t has some value. And this value has to be the same as uh, psi rk plus drk. So it has moved to a new position, but at a later time given by t plus dt. This is what we mean that the wave front just propagates in time. The, um, the value of the wave function, the value of the disturbance does not change. It just moves from one place to the other one in some small time dt. So we can just uh, equate these two things and we obtain the following expression. That psi rk is equal to at time t is psi rk plus drk at time t plus dt. Substituting into our exponential form, we get the following, which we can just expand. Now, all of these vectors that are underlined are parallel. So even though we have them written in vector notation and we're taking their inner products, because they are parallel, it's really just a simple multiplication of numbers because they're all pointing in the same directions. So we can just take their magnitudes and we simplify the notation as follows. And on the right side, we uh, expand um, the, uh, the parentheses and we get the following. So in order for the left-hand side and the right-hand side to be equal, we have the following requirement that those underlined terms must sum to zero. So we write it down and we see that k times drk is equal to plus or minus omega times dt. We can just bring dt from right-hand side to the left-hand side and we bring k from left-hand side to the right-hand side to finally obtain our expression for the, uh, the phase velocity of the, uh, of the plane wave, of the sinusoidal plane wave. And we, we recover the exact same expression as we saw um, in our examples for one-dimensional traveling waves. The phase velocity is simply given by plus or minus omega over k. And the plus or minus arises from the fact that uh, uh, it, the wave could be traveling along the k direction or opposite the k direction. So this concludes our example of plane waves. Let's summarize. So plane waves are um, waves which uh, have constant disturbance on the plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Uh, the simplest example that we consider is a harmonic plane wave given by the following expression, where k is equal to 2 pi over lambda, and we derive that the phase velocity is given by plus or minus omega over k. Now, despite its simplicity, 
plane waves come up are very useful because they can be used as basis function to um, expand any uh, complicated or complex wave uh, as, as a superposition of plane waves. And they will pop up everywhere. Either whether you do engineering or physics or mathematics, they're very useful. So it's, it's very advisable to get used to them.